Are they great eights? And uh, yeah, welcome to part two of uh, ecosystems. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about ecosystems and just telling you what you need to know in order to create a really nice poster for me and the classroom. So what we're going to talk about is what an ecosystem is. So an ecosystem is an area in which all the living things interact with each other and with the non-living things in the environment. We refer to the non-living things as the abiotic components or abiotic factors and the living things as the biotic components. So biotic factors cannot survive without abiotic factors but abiotic factors can exist by themselves. So let's look at some abiotic components. So the abiotic or non-living factors in an ecosystem affect the way in which living organisms can grow and carry out their different activities. If these factors are not suitable for organisms living in an area, they will struggle to survive. Abiotic factors include air and wind, temperature, sunlight and shade, soil, stones and rocks, steep or gentle slopes. So let's go a little bit into the detail between each one of them. So air and wind, the gases in air are important to most of the life processes of both plants and animals such as photosynthesis and respiration. Moving air or wind is very important for biotic factors. For examples, birds use wind currents to fly for long distances when they migrate and plants use the wind to disperse their seeds. A little bit more about temperature, sunlight and shade. The temperature of an ecosystem is an important abiotic factor because it will determine what life the ecosystem supports. Some organisms only live in hot climates, while others prefer cold climates. The amount of sunlight or shade in an, any given ecosystem will affect the temperature and therefore what biotic life can be found there. You can also go a little bit further. So if there's more sunlight in an area and the temperature rises, you are going to have more precipitation in that area because of downpours. And if it's colder, there's going to be animals like polar bears and penguins and things like that that prefer that colder temperatures. So now let's look at soil, stones and rocks. Soil, stones and rocks are abiotic factors with which determine what type of organisms are found in an ecosystem. Some animals, like wood lice, prefer moist, sticky soil, while scorpions and centipedes prefer loose, dry soil. Some plants grow better in sandy soil, while some trees, like the indigenous acacia trees like we have here in South Africa, grow in rocky grounds. Let's look at steep or gentle slopes. Physiographic factors like altitude, the slope of land and the position of the area in relation to the sun or winds impact an ecosystem. Slopes are important because they affect the surface temperature of the soil. In South Africa, north facing slopes are warmer, while south facing slopes are generally cooler. So in South Africa, the eastern slopes face the rain-bearing winds and in some places, these slopes are covered in forest due to the amount of rain that they get. Like if we look at the Drakensberg mountain range in South Africa, the eastern parts of the Drakensberg has got a nice forested belt because of the precipitation, the rain and things coming in from the, the Indian Ocean, whereas the western side now it's a little bit more drier, less forests, a few trees scattered here and there and that's why you get different vegetation types and obviously then different animals occurring in the different belts. Okay, so the gradient of the slope also affects the abiotic factors. For example, the steep slope will not hold water, soil and rocks. The north facing slope will experience a lot of sunlight while a south sloping uh, face will mostly be in shade. Trees and vegetation will grow better on gentle north facing slopes. That's here for us in South Africa because we are in the southern hemisphere. 
Remember, the guy is living in the northern hemisphere. It's just the opposite way around. But in an ecosystem, biotic factors that are the living organisms and the waste that they produce. Biotic factors are the most varied and easily changed parts of an ecosystem. Biotic factors in an ecosystem interact with each other and rely on one another for life. For example, a consumer such as a cow eats grass or a predator such as a lion eats a buck. Biotic factors are influenced by disease, pollution, abiotic conditions and their organisms in the ecosystem. The survival of individual organisms and populations depend on the ability of organisms to cope with the changes or to adapt in their habitat or in the ecosystem. We will talk a little bit more about that when we get to Unit 6, but guys, a size of an ecosystem, the size of an ecosystem is not specifically defined. Also, we can define an ecosystem as a stable system made up of a community of organisms which interact with the environment. So I want you guys to look at these keywords, gradient and habitat. Gradient is the, the degree to which slope ascends or descends. And habitat is the place where an organism lives. So those are the two key words that I want you guys to please uh, put emphasis on. So on the work that I've given you guys on Google Classroom, you'll have this little diagram. Just go through it. But the important thing for you guys is I want you to make a, an ecosystem poster. Now before we have a look and see where we're going to be looking at for our own ecosystem, I want you guys to go outside the class and have a look at the different areas at our school. Have a look and see if you can find a square meter, that's one meter by one meter sized area, that has some interesting features to it that you can study and get information for your poster. I want you to look at your soil, I want you to look at the slope, I want you to look at all of the different aspects, the biotic and abiotic factors that makes that an interesting ecosystem. Then have a look on page 14 and answer those questions. So uh, you have to go and collect information. So your last bits of work that you got, I want you to read through all of the information that you get and then the layout of your poster, guys, is this. On the last page, let me zoom in a little bit for you guys here. It's exactly the same as what you can see there. It's four quadrants. At the top, I want the title of the poster. I want it, guys, in A4. So basically, your normal page is A3. Two A3s next to one another and then divide it into four parts. I want a diagram of the ecosystem. Below that, I want the feeding relations. Top right, I want abiotic factors and biotic factors. And below that, I want the human interference and the conservation suggestions. Guys, I want you guys to work on this for this weekend. And then next week, we're gonna start looking at some of those posters. The due date is next week Friday. This counts for marks guys, please. And also please have a look at um, some of the points below it. Like the diagram of the ecosystem, I want you to draw it, I want you to label it, I want you to color it in. So go through those points guys, this is gonna count. So please go and do some research about ecosystems guys and Show me what you got. I am really looking forward to this and I'll see you guys next time in the next class. Bye for now.